Hello and welcome to the Inside Stylist podcast. I'm Emma Morton Turner and you're listening to episode 25, Discovering Gorgeous New Interior Fabrics with Angela Constantinou of Cocoon Home. So I was lucky enough to be invited to Angela's house to um, interview her and got to see all these new fabrics up close and they're absolutely gorgeous, really quirky, some really fun designs. So well worth checking out, but she's an inspiration. She's very entrepreneurial and it's always inspiring to be around people like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Welcome to the Inside Stylist podcast. I have a guest today who you might not know. She is from Cocoon Home UK, which is a website that has fabric designers and um, with the most beautiful designs. Um, today's guest is Angela Constantinou. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes. Well, hey. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on the episode. Thank you for inviting me. So, um, Cocoon Home is quite a new um, company for you, a new yes. website. And it only started, was it September last That's year? That's right, yeah. So, we're recording this in August 2018, so it's yeah. just Almost a year. About <laughs> yes, and look, you're still smiling. I am still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite a journey and quite a learning curve. So, so because it's so new, maybe um, if you would explain what Cocoon Home is yeah. for anyone who hasn't heard of it before. Yeah, well, the concept of Cocoon Home is... Uh, one of the parts is nothing new it's interior fabrics but the um, bits that I hope set it aside is that I work with artists from various disciplines so they're not always textile designers the first launch we had a street artist on board illustrator line ochre artist um, and um, they do I think the designs are fairly traditional but there's always little twists yes. like one of them's a toile de jouy but yes. And it's got it's got sloths yes. riding carts <laughs> instead of French pastoral scenes. Yes. Or one of the other designers, she does wonderful lino cuts, and my brief to her was naked people <gasps> and trees. Yes. So we have this wonderful kind of Adam and Eve, um, almost pagan actually style fabric, um, and they all get a royalty because I don't think artists generally are supported brilliantly. And they've had an advance on that as well because I'm not an established company. Mm. So, um, you know, until I make money, just having a royalty didn't seem fair. So they've all had an advance on that as well. Um, so it's all about kind of transparency. You know who the designers are. I want you to buy their products out of the company as well as within the company. And it's, I just want it to be quite wholesome and mm. fun and just a little bit different as yeah. well from what's out there. When I was, um, we first... Um, met in a Facebook group and I went and had a little look at your website and that that sloth one was the first one I found. <laughs> My daughter's obsessed with sloth. She has a teddy bear sloth. It's not she's 14, it's not like she's her teddy. And um, she got it at Scout Camp and he goes to every single Scout Camp. So the moment I saw that I was going, come and see this and she's like, we need this in my bathroom. Oh uh, do you know what? That's it's so fabric. cool. It's it's wonderful. That's by Megan Hindley, who's also known as Steadhead Art. And she's this great kind of street artist, illustrator. And I gave her a brief, which was actually a bit more specific. And it was a toile de jouy, and it was a real play on it. And I had a real specific idea, which I'm not going to share because I still want to do it. But I also said to her, you know how my mind works? So you can always do something else. Mm. And she came up with this. I'm like, that is great. Yeah. <laughs> because, because when you look on the website, you look at the picture and you go, is, is that a sloth? <laughs> and then you, you make it big and you go... That is so it's cool. So it's so random. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. It's actually been one of the popular fabrics. It's quite funny. I've had um, a couple of sales of that to America as well. Oh, so, um, but uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, I think a lot of the things are a bit risk taking and I go with my gut. Yeah. But I'm hoping good, that you want, works. Otherwise it's just going to be the same stuff you've seen everywhere else before. Yeah. I love traditional. I absolutely do. Um, one of the other designs, Izzy's, is a really beautiful um, lino cut floral design based on the hellebore flower. And But she's got tiny things. Actually, she's just got a little snail in there. And it's really <laughs> tiny, but she's got this massive pet snail. She kind of snuck it really? in. <laughs> and it's quite a Martha Armitage star, you know, it's, you know, because it's a real influence of hers. But, you know, there's little things. Then there's a little butterfly as well. And it's just an interesting flower. And again, it's, it's, 
not, I don't think anything's out of the ordinary. It's just really, some things are re really twisted, like the sloths, um, or like these strange bodies, again by Megan, that go in and out of ways, which people go, oh, I really like that. And then they look at it and go, oh my yes, God, that freaked me out. It is. I quite, love it. Um, <laughs> it is, you're looking and you go, is that a foot? Is that a hand? And then it's is that like, a bum? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yes, quite it a lot is. of bums in there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> which I actually think, you know, and there's certain things I've learned, like certain, you know, that I think will be better with a wallpaper and, you know, but it's... Um, yeah, it's that's that's a long-winded way of saying what I'm about. We we are about fabrics, and we are about supporting British talent and working with diverse artists, mm. and um, and hopefully running a business that makes not just the company and me money, but the designers mm. will then have this passive income coming in every year from their royalty, yeah. which is what I really want to happen. Yeah. So. Brilliant. Yeah. Sounds a bit like inside stylist. Yeah. Promoting <laughs> yeah. the, the fabric world. Yes. Whereas I'm promoting the interior as well. Yeah. So what's your background then? Um, well, I don't do any of the design work because I can't draw at all. So I actually, my background is um, not conventional in the sense that I, ba I study music at university. Okay. So, and I really, when I was about 14, 15, I was desperate to be a musician. So I think there's always been an element of me that really wanted to be super talented at something and something in the arts. Um, at one point I wanted to be a runner and then I wanted to be a ballerina. And then you kind of slowly learn that you're not, you're not actually that creative. <laughs> you just got a good eye. And so I did music. Then I worked in opera. Then I worked in TV for documentaries. And then I just got... And at that point, I'd moved back home to London. And I was with my mum for about six months, mum and dad. And my mum's a real high-end clothes maker. I mean, like, hand-sewn, beautiful. So I... And I'm really short. I'm 4'11". So I started sewing, got totally obsessed. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, I really like this. And I'm really into kind of haute couture techniques. I get obsessed with reading about it. It's like, well, it's really difficult to make a living out of that. I'll try upholstery. Couldn't get on the course I wanted to because it was starting in a week and it was a three-year course. It was booked up. So they said, oh, do the soft furnishing course. And I was like, oh, curtains. <laughs> I was like, well, I'll just do it anyway. And it was a one-day-a-week course in bespoke soft furnishing over three years. And so I had to leave TV because I couldn't do it. So I got a job in the NHS that I could do full-time over four days. And I loved it. And I just started looking at the flats going, I just really like fabrics. And then I did this four-week, like one day a week for four weeks, um, fabric printing course at it's really sad it's closed down now it was called the London Prince Works Trust and it was the only screen printing workspace and studio in the UK that was specific to textiles and so you did normal screen printing foil blocking flocking you know kind of heat pressing um you know, dye sublimation or whatever. I'm sure people are going to correct me on terms because no, it was so I long really ago. And it was great. And again, I was like, I can't draw, but I really like the idea of fabrics. And I had this grand idea that I was, this was going back seven years ago, um, thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to commission an artist. I'm going to screen print the fabric myself. Brilliant Obviously idea. that was soon out the window. Screen printing your own fabric is a, you know, you need a massive table mm. and at least two people. And I, um, I wrote my business plan about seven years ago and quickly realised I didn't have the money for it because I'm all or nothing. There's some wonderful independent companies have started and they'd started with one design and kind of took it from there. I decided I was going to save my butt off. So I worked in the NHS, finished the course after three years and by that point I'd realised I think I want to do fabrics. And then thought, well, what I'll do, I'll run my bespoke business Go on loads of holidays, have a life, and then, once I kind of haven't got out of my system, to be honest yet, and uh, but then start saving up, because I needed to save a vast, mm. a vast amount of money. And I didn't even manage to save it all up, but then I still decided I was going to leave in March last year and uh, get it all going. And, and I'd already done all the research six years ago. I had my business plan there, and I found the printers that I wanted, um, and who were the most uh, cost-effective but have such a good quality of digital printing the advantage of that is that i don't it's i can do minimum runs with screen printing you have to have at least 50 to 100 meters depending on who you're going right. with i couldn't afford it and also like i said i wanted to go out with a i want to start with a bag so i was like i don't want to start with less than 10 designs <laughs> which wow. is just stupid <laughs> well it's not it's just kind of how i wanted to do it i was all or nothing so um yeah, it kind of was that process of, and who knows? I mean, I hope this is it. I'm looking forward to seeing how it evolves. But um, 
yeah, it's um, it's been quite a bizarre journey kind of going through all these things. But I've, I've reconciled with the fact that I can't draw, but I have good ideas. Mm. And, um, you know, I work fairly closely with the designers, but I, I let, give them a lot of leeway. They get a real starting point. And um, I talk to them about stuff, give them bits of inspiration where I want them to go from that suits their style already. And, and basically I go, go off and then send me your ideas. And then... They were always brilliant. <laughs> so, so tell me about that process then. So well, no, first tell me how you found the designers. Ah, okay. So um, one of them I knew, um, who was a textile designer, Nancy Strawn, is now a, now a stylist. And so I knew her. Funny enough, Nancy, I thought, was going to be my safe bet. She ended up actually coming with up with a kind of quite an abstract fabric so she ended up being my wrist which is quite nice and surprising and then I met um the um so there are five we started with there's another one Christena Christena back I will always pronounce her surname wrong Baki Zinski who is an illustrator based up in Leeds and she actually studied with my brother and she's got really playful illustrations she does a lot of um graphic novels and I just really liked her style and I approached her, she said yes, and that was great. And there was India Rosebird, who I found on Instagram, who does these beautiful woodcuts. And all I saw was, it was her work from her degree, and there were these beautiful wood carvings of masquerades, which she then developed further to do for one of the designs for us. They've all done two designs for the Nautch Collection, by the way. Um, and then there was Izzy, who I emailed and never heard back from. And I kept looking at Instagram because I followed her going, I love her work. I love her work. I wish she'd reply. And I bought one of her prints quite some time after I emailed her, about five months. And then she emailed me and said, I thought you were a spammer. So, but I'd oh. love to work with you. I was like, oh my God. And she's doing two more for us Brilliant. this time round, which are amazing that we'll be launching in September. And then Megan was um, an accident because I'd actually didn't know Megan. There's uh, this phenomenal um, tattooist called Kola Hari and he does these beautiful really thick kind of edge tattoos but really stunning stuff and when I was following him it was just quite medieval dark kind of inspired mm. and we met and he was quite key but he sadly he was such an artist he was like I just um, he said, if the contract's too complicated, because I've had that before where I've not understood it, I don't want to do it. I was like, fair enough. If I can't understand the contract, yes. you can't. Yeah, it? and I was yeah. like, that's We're not fair. Same. Yeah, I was yeah. like, you need to understand it as well. So I got the contract, got the solicitors. Like, it has to be, you know, I don't want loads of jargon in it. It needs to be super easy because these people can't afford a solicitor mm. to go through it. And I sent it to him, didn't hear, didn't hear. And I emailed him and said, I just don't want to work with the contract. He said, I'll do the work, but I don't want to work with the contract. And I was like, oh, I, I can't. I said, no, I really to, want, but I can't because I need to own the design because if I don't own the design, I can't protect it. Mm. And, and you know, you're not covered. I'm not covered, but you're not covered. And it's, you know, so I kind of had to say bye. And, and so I put a shout out on Facebook and I said, I need someone who draws really traditionally. And a friend posted it and then someone said, oh, um, yeah, I've got a friend. She's awesome. Her name's Megan. Here's, uh, I'll put you in touch. And then I saw her stuff. Oh, oh my God, she's amazing. And she lives up the road. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So it was all for, fortuitous. fortuitous. Yeah. <laughs> Very fortuitous. So, so it was um, mainly Instagram, be a bit knowing and um, see, you know, recommendations. We, I'm working with a new designer for the next launch called Kelly Conway, who I also asked initially, but she couldn't do, she was really busy with her own stuff. And she's on board. She's done two. She's never done textiles before either. Megan hadn't done textiles. In fact, only three of the now six designers were textile designers. And she's done such a spectacular, I mean, a mind-blowing job. And she's been a joy to work with. And, and I just found her by putting in best line cut artists. <laughs> and she came up and I was like, I want her. <laughs> and I got her eventually. It's really, yeah. it's very exciting to be able to just kind of find exactly what you're looking for and oh my hooray for social media oh, do, you, do you know what I don't know how I would have done it initially because it, it would have been very hard you have to be I think probably before the internet really into you know within the industry or have studied within so you know mm. people 
Um, so now it is just one to four. I think a lot of people find people on Instagram. You know, they just, they, they do. Mm. And I do get yeah. illustrators um, contacting me, asking to design. But, you know, it's like I'm probably not going to do a new collection next year because it's, you know, money dependent. You've mm. got to pay the designers and stuff. And there'll be other things we I might do instead. So, um but it is nice people want to work with you. Yeah, I can say <laughs> that's flattering. Yeah, especially as you're such a newcomer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where did the name come from, Cocoon Home? <laughs> well, my initial name. In fact, I have another company which I kind of transferred the name to, which started before. That was my bespoke soft furnishing company, and um, that started about ten years ago. And the original name, what well, was going to be, was Delanix. So I sent an email out to people, go, what do you think of this? And people didn't even know each other. Said. Sounds like a toilet cleaner, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it was amazing. People had never met, never knew each That's other. So I was like, funny. okay, I need to rethink this. I didn't think that at all. I thought, is that with an X or with CK? Yeah, well, it's this beautiful tree. It's a really oh. beautiful tree. And, um, which doesn't really Nothing relate to, do to furnishings toilet. either, either. <laughs> I, it was just a nice and it's, it was quite distinctive sounding word. And I was up in Scotland one year um, with an ex and it was really, it was their place and it was really, because winter really cold and I was in bed and you didn't want to get out and I just went, oh God, I feel like a cocoon. I feel so snug. And then I just went, oh my God, cocoon home. That's the name. <laughs> so Proper light bulb that's just that, And I just thought, that's just it. So I still have the bespoke business to make sure I kind of have an income mm. whilst I'm getting this off the ground. And But then I have a separate website, so for Cocoon Home, which is officially to Companies House, Cocoon Home Interiors Limited. So, because um, I, I just like the name, because eventually I won't be doing the making mm. stuff, and I just didn't want to lose the name. Yeah. So, and I, I just like it. I think it works. Yeah, it's and very a good. a friend of mine, she said, oh God, Angela, you're so clever. That's got a double meaning. It's not just being cocooned at home and being warm. It's also the cocoon of the silkworm. That's so clever. And I just said, yeah, yeah I did really it. <laughs> well, I didn't even think that <laughs> at all. Yeah, just, just, just say it, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been going for a year, but how long did it take you to get from concept right up until uh, launch? We, um, or take, taking out the fact that I actually wrote the business plan so Six many years, years ago, ago yeah. I actually st- did it so tight. And in fact, this year I started earlier with designs and even then it's not long enough. I think we started with the design work in about February, March last year. Bear in mind we were launching at Decorex yeah, that's in no September. Time at all. Oh my goodness. And bear in mind I've never done this before. I'm thinking you're gonna say, oh at least a year. Yeah, no, <laughs> that is no and I left myself nine months this time and that is not enough. Wow. And um and we only just sent off the fabrics to be printed and and uh, but the designers were amazing and we had very strict deadlines and I made sure that it worked with them because a lot of them also have other jobs and they mm. have other work. Um but we did it so tight, and I remember also. I um, don't use Photoshop, and I, I and it clicked. I, I got one of the fabrics. Out. I was like, "Why is that scale like so big?" It's because it was in a totally different resolution to the other, oh. so it had gone in much bigger. And luckily, my printers were amazing. I was like, "Oh my god, I need like another like five meters of this, please, please. Can you send it like now?" Because I had to get my website live, so I had to get them just get eat the fabric because I didn't want to put just. A computer images on the fabric mm. on the website i wanted the actual fabric yeah. photograph so people could see the Textures texture and... um so that was a bit of a pain but yeah we got there <laughs> so <laughs> we got there and you print yeah. in lancashire yeah yeah and was that a purposeful thing to have it all yeah. uk so uk design is yeah UK. um i have to adm- admit it's not a thing all we're uk based printed um you know, it wasn't conscious from that, if I'm honest. Mm. It was actually in terms of being able to have a good relationship, an easy relationship. I can't afford to jet off to India, like, every, mm. you know, three times a year to keep an eye on things. And um, and also, you'd probably have huge minimums mm. anyway if you're doing something abroad for it to be shipped, for it even to be worth your while. So I wanted to be able to, well, know who they were. So I did go up and see them before I even committed to, to it. Um, and... Um, you know, see the quality as well, um, and and make sure that they, even though I don't know much about printing, um, that they they knew their stuff, and they were also working with small companies as well, so they got mm. it, and they actually primarily work with quite small companies. Um, but it's more, I'm not a control freak at all, 
but it, it was I just felt safer and it felt more sensible and also they get their fabric from Scotland uh, from a mill in Scotland and I think Belgium as well so it doesn't travel far either mm. which is quite important because yeah. fabric's not a great industry full stop because it's quite a pollutant and there's lots of you know no fabric is a good fabric yeah. so you want to minimize stuff as much as possible and that's what's great about digital printing as well there's it's much more it, I love screen printing if I could screen print our fabrics I, I seriously would but you waste a lot of paint and that's not environmentally good with digital printing you're just using mm. the ink of what you need yeah, and that's, that's it good so it's quite interesting so yeah, I didn't um, know that. yeah yeah so yeah and also we can print to order so again um, minimal wastage with fabric because yeah. then I don't have to have bolts and bolts and then if something doesn't sell I've not left with 200 meters of something that I'm gonna in the end chuck mm. so I quite like it from that I'm money wise great as well because I can do minimums but it's also just yeah people get exactly what they want and they're happy to wait and yeah I feel I feel better consciously yeah. environmentally it's such because an of it thing yeah to feel happy with what you're doing yeah you've got to minimize as much as you can well yeah. we, we can only do so much unfortunately so um but uh, but they're great and they're they're lovely and when i've gone to them just a small order they're like don't worry it takes time we've been oh, doing this for 15 years and we're only now finding our feet and in my head i'm going i don't want to wait 15 years <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely though what, that is it's all about that relationship that, yeah that's lovely though Definitely. really lovely yeah um i was gonna say what's the favorite part of your job but i just yeah. I had a question in my head then and now i can't think what that was but anyway what is the favorite part of your job um what's a typical you, day like oh my god it's not it's not it's exciting not at all <laughs> <laughs> at the moment in the future i envisioned it i envision it as something really brilliant that i'll just be pottering around sending orders out you know ha- having do my instagram stories and you know, thinking about new artists I'm going to contact. The reality day to day is I get up and I have a mild panic, first of all, about (laughs) what have I done? I've just spent all my life savings on this. And then I look at the designs and go, oh, they're so good. And then I get on the computer and I go, okay, write a list. So there'll be various things because I have the bespoke work as well. You know, I've got to kind of do that. But at the moment, a typical day has been over the last few months um, because of the new designs, has been liaising with the designers, kind of, um, you know, um, getting their um, uh, their drawings in, having meetings with them, seeing which one we're going to go for, talking about scale and size. You know, when they get the design to me, I've got to make sure it all matches up. I've been now writing press releases and sending them out, you know, slowly. Been been preparing for Decorex, which is a headache. Um, doing my oh god you know accounts because i registered for vat voluntarily to make everything cheaper do you know it sounds like i don't do a lot but i seem to do work all day and then i'm constantly kind of trying to think of other avenues i've been trying to get a new you know stockists and i've just got an australian one which is and they're super excited style revolutionary so if you're listening to this in australia they are now our exclusive distributors. Very cool. So, and... Um, so you're international now, though. Well, yeah, I'm more international than I am British. It's mental. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've sold more abroad so far than in Britain. So, but, um, yeah, and it's just day-to-day admin as well. And, you know, flicking through magazines, trying to keep seeing also what's out there. Because you are always influenced by stuff. And I spend a lot of time... I've got a private Pinterest board, Pinterest board, which is called Illustration Inspiration. And in there, I'm not kidding you, there's about 40 boards of other bits of <laughs> inspiration, like all separated mm, out. And, yeah. and I do that quite a lot because I sometimes get panicked. Oh, God, I might run out of ideas that I want people to do or styles. And then you realise you're never, ever, no. ever, ever going to run out of anything. Um, you know, and at the moment, I've got quite a lot of bespoke work on. So I'm, you know... Um, making lots of lampshades and blinds for people which is which is good and um, then I kind of finish up oh and also we've been doing loads of colour sampling so I've just sent the last design off and Callie's wonderful but she said I don't mind what colour you do and I was like I really want the designers in on the colour because yeah. I'm not a professional you say so that she left and it, it up to me and like, uh, yeah. yeah and actually I was like oh, this is quite yeah I can't wait so we've got one one more design to that I've sent off for the colour sampling and all the others are coming back so again it's quite a varied so does that stuff. that sample comes to you and yeah. then you send it on to Callie and no designs. she's you, not she I, I will let her know I go chosen this and this with the other designs they like to be involved and um, we do go through and it takes quite a number of hours just to 
do that and you know get it all kind of popped in photoshop to send over to the printers then it comes back and then i kind of go i like this this these are the ones i like you tell me what you like and then most of them will t- tend to match up and then i'll decide whether we're doing three colorways or two colorways mm. and I, I will have ultimate say but i i don't really want to ever do some you know have a color that the designers really don't like no um there's one in one of the new collections with india that I've gone for a red colour. And it, she wasn't unhappy with it. She's like, oh, you know, red's quite a risky colour. I'm like, there's just something for me that just feels right. I know a lot of people don't use red in interiors, but it just kind of felt right. That could be the most ridiculous business sense, but only time will tell, yeah. you know. And again, digital printing, you can afford to make, I think, a few mistakes. Mm. Um, and also be- it's good to just trial it and see, and it could yeah. be a complete... You exactly, know, a, a clear winner, and it's such a lovely design. And this one's quite playful, and I can see it in you know not just kids but teenagers' room. And even though it's pit, uh, it's red, it will just pair really well. Say you wanted it a, a dirt, dirty, I really love dirty and dusky pinks. I'm like it would look great with that, mm. or you know with grey, you know. So I, but you know you will see. I don't want to. I don't want the business to be stuck in a colour palette because for me yeah. it depends on the design. Mm. I always find there's a bit of a gut instinct with the designs that I'm going for. And and it does help. Like Izzy's got an amazing eye for colour. I mean she comes up with great colour combinations and I I I adore working with her because I just think I would never have thought of that. That is brilliant. So I'm learning lots as mm. well. Yeah, I'm definitely learning and it's it's all good. You're part of Acid, the anti copying in design uh, company, trademark. Set yeah, up, they're kind of they're, they're I don't yeah they are a company they're almost like a union but not mm, a union yeah yeah it's kind of making sure people know not to copy yeah. your design so yeah. is that something you kind of did you research that and then go yeah you knew about that from yeah. the very beginning yeah because um, they're great because obviously most small companies can't afford a solicitor mm. to help you sue someone so you just pay a yearly fee and if you need help you'll get help from them and they'll fight on your behalf because. Wow. Um, you know, I, I have heard, you know, awful stories of really big companies just basically rip it, taking other people's designs when they're not really well known. So I'm always quite keen that even, I mean, if you look at the on my Instagram feed, I'm already giving people really strong peaks of the new collection already because I'm like, well, I want it out there as well. Mm. And, you know, it's I'm under acid as well um, because you've got to protect yourself as much as possible. And, um, you know... It's very easy. I don't, I don't, probably people don't do it so much here, but you still see there's um, a company, Mini Moderns, and mm. on their, um, do you know, I, I, probably it's not intentional. They've hired a freelancer and they've seen this design somewhere, they couldn't yeah, remember it, and, and it's just come inspired. back from their subconscious. But, you know, it's good to, you know, have that back in. And I think it's important for, for small people because you just it's just protected yeah and also and your designs are so unique yeah. and people will see them and go oh my god that's brilliant i yeah. want something like that and it would be so easy for people to copy it and yeah, yeah. so it's good that you're yeah you're covered. And I, yeah and i want people to kind of look at it and go that oh yeah that's cocoon home eventually yes. you know or i want something quite traditional but just a little bit mm, a little bit twee and oh i know where to go to yeah and that's that's the point and and you know fabrics do well because a lot of them you know i know what styles people generally like so i again probably taken a risk but um yeah you you, you do want to protect your mm. your your baby you know we all do yeah so, absolutely you know. um i should just mention now you mentioned instagram your instagram handle is at cocoon home so people can go over and have yeah, a little look at these new designs do. and Let's talk about decorating. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, you've told me already, this is super organised, that you're Stan G22A. So if yes. anyone goes to decorate, so they should come find you. Yeah, and come see and say your, hello. Your stand. So ha- you've had to design your stand and get that all together. Oh, that my God. must be quite stressful. Well, last year I just went all out because I had all my savings at that point. So I got them to paint it. I got them to put the wall in. I hired a handyman. I just literally rocked up, you know, with my curtain made things and hung them up. And this year, I was like, oh, God, <laughs> I need to keep this really minimal now. And um, so I'm going to paint it myself. And I've been thinking how I would want to des- design it just slightly differently. It's not a big space, so mm. you can't put a lot in. But I'm doing some very bad upholstery at the moment on a chair I got from eBay and hoping that that's going to work. But you'll be able to see all of our collections. So we'll have six new designs coming out. 
Um, so two designed by Izzy Williamson, who also designed two for our initial collection. Two by India Bird, who also designed two for our initial collection. And then we're working with Callie Conway, who has done two um, designs and has never designed for textiles. I'm just, she's blown me away that having never designed for textiles before. And I'm going to keep your hands off everyone because they are, <laughs> I want her we again. Got in first. Yeah, <laughs> she is amazing. But they all are. And again, that. Um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's always a good show. It's, it was scary last year because obviously I didn't know what was going to happen. I thought people would be really snobby and be like, oh God, here's someone trying to do something. Mm. So everyone was so supportive mm. and lovely oh, and good. amazing. And um, it was just, you know, it was, especially the first two days, because obviously everyone's there and the journalists are there and everyone wants to get in there really quick. It's really, really buzzy. So, so yeah, do, do come along. So, but I will be... You know, don't look too closely at the painted walls. Just look at the fabric. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell, from a so when we go to like stylists and writers go to Decorex, we're mm-hmm. looking at um, finding new products mm-hmm. and new ranges and stuff. So, what for you? What is your eye? What would be your fantastic <gasps> win at Decorex? Oh my god! Do you Sorry, know what? I'm throwing it's you. So this is a hard. question you haven't prepped you for. Because <laughs> I think our styles they're they're quite. I don't not all what we have at the moment would suit every magazine no and that's a thing I like so many do you know I think instantly people would go world of interiors and it's a great magazine but actually I don't think it's a great magazine when you actually want to hit duck you know my main body of customer is the trade are Mm. the interior designers and are the curtain makers but I want the general public to see the design yeah, so then they can go actually name. we mm. want this fabric um so i we did get quite a lot of interest from um at magazines but i didn't have any style photos at that point so my press release just fell flat like completely and maybe i didn't approach it right but my win i think that's really really hard because if anyone wants to put us in in any time we are really happy to like yeah. give you any fabrics because I love to build up relationships um, with with magazines because um, uh, again I think we've got something unique but that does appeal to everyone. It's not completely. It's definitely not completely out there. And to kind of start being featured in magazines and stylists and magazines going, oh yeah, yeah, let's get Cocoon Home to send one of their fabrics again. And I've had one when I sent out a press release recently that wanted me to send some photos over which i did that might be in the november issue so i'm hoping it is there i'm not going to say who it is no, just in case me, it doesn't happen keep me posted and yeah. i'll share that on the inside yeah. size, um, so, instagram um, and facebook and everything yeah. so we can kind of shout it out there yeah, but, fingers crossed. yeah so we were talking earlier about magazines and how you're um yeah. comfortable using mag or I'll say that again we were talking earlier about magazines and how you can um, build relationships with them yeah. and you're quite happy to send fabrics out oh. for um, shoots and you have styled images and you yeah. have samples. You can yes, I can send out samples. I also am a bespoke or furniture for the mm. last 10 years. So if they say so we someone want has a cushion. piece of furniture they wanted covered in one of your I can do, fabrics. I could do a loose cover for dining chairs. Um, I can do, can't do upholstery. I could do loose covers. Um, but absolutely, if they wanted something just seamed up for curtains um, easily, I could, you know get that done but I am I am very happy because you have to be and you you have to you have to take the hit with the cost of the fabric because you know what's better than being in national magazines Mm. and trade magazines and you know and having a stylist do something wonderful with your fabric I mean it's 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 amazing and also um I think because I'm not a big company and you'll see the styled shoots which were actually done in my flat with just painted MDF board, drilled into the back of my IKEA shelf, and then turned round with lino floor, which looks like real wood. I mean, take a look at my Instagram um, account, people, because when you, you see the, the photos... If you knew the tricks that we yeah, did behind amazing. the scenes, it's exactly the same. When someone told me the heel tool in Photoshop so I could take out the seams of the um, between the MDF, I was like, this is amazing! <laughs> Everything looks great! Um... But yeah, to have you know, you know, people do kind of wonderful setups that you see in magazines as well. That that use it. I am, I am. Hit me up, guys. Yeah. I mean, and and the next collection again, you, you'll just love. But I am, I am open to everything. <laughs> so if you want to contact Angela, you can email inquiries at cocoonhome.uk. 
is that right so this is probably episode 26 i think i've probably said about four or five times that i would love to live in a warehouse <laughs> and we're in a warehouse <laughs> i'll just let you know for visual purposes though <laughs> It's not a very glamorous setup here. I'd move here in a heartbeat. Um, <laughs> so Angela works from home. Yeah. Um, her home is a very big open space warehouse. It's it's actually very cosy for a big it open is, space. Yeah. She's got a big dining table, two big sofas. I'm sitting in one of her upholstered chairs, which is very nice. I'm not spilling tea or anything. And then at the end, you've got your um, kind of work table. Yeah. And it's got stacks of fabrics rolled up underneath. Yeah. And you've got rolls of fabric and there's all your cottons on the wall. Yeah. And then I'm, behind us, there's fabric and your bed is hidden behind there. So yeah. you sectioned it all off. I'm That's very, fabulous. very, very lucky. We're in a great building. I mean, I, lo I love the building. And... Uh, I bizarrely enough, we we've, we've got such a good deal on our rents here that it's actually cheaper for me to live here than to actually than to find a room in a house in London wow. and rent a studio. So, uh, but I am I am very lucky. I do count every time I come in the door. I'm like, please don't put up my rent. Please don't put up my rent. Please don't put up my rent. I love it here. <laughs> no, it's lovely. It's my dream, but not with kids. <laughs> oh just, God, no! Just there's me. nowhere to shut the door in here. The only door is the front door and the bathroom door. <laughs> no, my kids are big. Yeah. Even so, yeah. even more so. <laughs> Well, so I was going to say what's next, but the new, when are the new collections coming out? That's so, what I was going to ask. Ah, when are the next collections going to be coming well, out? Well, the next collection will be launched at Decorex. Um, so that will be the 16th of September. And as I said, there's six designs. But also, um, I am hoping that um, once Decorex is over, I'm going to start looking at wallpaper. Because they are quite exciting. a few designs. Yeah, so there won't be all of them, but <gasps> the, quite... The people in the, the sea. people in the yeah oh, that, that is so cool for a bathroom and do you know from what i've learned that is should have been a wallpaper i think rather than a fabric and yeah um, you're right i think yeah. i think it's lovely as a fabric but i think but i think it'll kill yeah as a wallpaper. brilliant wallpaper and um, not all of them will work as wallpaper most of the new collection will so that's just something that and i really want to focus on it now but there's so much going on that i just have to wait and and I put one of Callie's new designs up and so many people on my feed and her feed have been saying, when is this going to be wallpaper? Ooh. When is this oh. going to be wallpaper? That's so, fantastic feedback though, yeah. isn't it? So you know it's, it's, so there's it's, demand. Yeah, it's good. And, and the other step size to, again, just try and get in magazines, get publicity, get people kind of, you know, buying and um, just hopefully eventually becoming a bit of a household name yeah. in fabrics and wallpaper you've, and you've already been on the inside style exactly I you're am, done you know got stop this in australia now that's it like let the money roll <laughs> well thank you very much for well, inviting you. me to your lovely home thank and for you. chatting today it's been really oh, entrepreneur i love interviewing entrepreneurs it's very inspiring <laughs> thank you so Brilliant. much it's thank been you. great really has thank you Thanks for listening to the Inside Stylist podcast. You'll find all the links from today's episode and you'll find links to those fabulous fabrics over in the show notes at insidestylist.com forward slash cocoon home. Until next time, bye for now.